selling with authenticity. It's building that relationship. It's about the value. Because you want to make that impact. It can make you happy. Elevate others around Welcome us. to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your home for authentic, effective, and socially integrated sales strategies to help you master the art of selling. Join your co-hosts Larry Levine and Daryl Amy, along with some of the world's best sales thought leaders and practitioners, as we explore ways to help you grow your sales. Hello and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host, Daryl Amy, here today with Larry Levine. What's going oh, yeah. on, Larry? Uh, you know what? It is. I tell you what, Daryl, it is so good to be part of the Selling from the Heart community. What a community. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed every single day, Daryl. You know, as we step into this new year and and uh, we just wrapped up the 2021 Authentic Selling Challenge, what an incredible time. I can't, we're going to have to make this an annual habit, Larry, because that was so much fun. Well, I, I tell you what, Daryl, hats off to you. I mean, because sometimes you get these creative things going through your head. And I remember months and months ago when you said, hey, I got an idea. What would it look like if? And then I go, uh-oh, Daryl, you got to stop thinking. But I tell you what. It was amazing. It really was incredible. And thank you to everybody who showed up. And what's exciting now is so many people are raising their hand and saying, I want to be a part of the Authentic Sales Success Accelerator Program. And if you want to learn more about that, message us. You definitely heard about that during the challenge. And this is this is going to be a fantastic year. And you're right. It's the community of authentic sales professionals that have made this such a special year. So a huge shout out to everybody in our insiders group and and all the folks out there who are working to to be authentic and bring real relationship and real value to the table. It's so exciting, Larry. Yeah, and I think the key the key word that that I the it's the lead it's the lead in Daryl. It's it's community and and I think if, if there's anything that I would urge sales professionals out there to really key in on in 2021 is bring a sense of community out into the marketplace, create that sense of community based on authenticity, substance, being genuine, really giving a rip about your clients, create that sense of community with your clients and watch what starts to happen throughout 2021. Yeah. And one of the best ways to do that, that's a great transition to a shout out to our sponsor and our good friends at Bomb Bomb. If you want to create a sense of community, one of the best ways to do that is using video messaging. So uh, Larry, I love this platform and, and uh, I'm really excited to share this brief message from our friends over at BombBomb. Bomb. Selling from the heart means putting you back into the sales process, your passion, your energy, the emotion you bring, the belief you have in your product or service. Sales is a transfer of emotion. But can that happen if you're hiding behind a keyboard? Will another text-based message in their inbox get you to where you want to go? There's a better way and it starts with you. You in front of more people more often through a video messaging platform like BombBomb. We want to guide you along the Selling from the Heart process. Sign up for a free trial of BombBomb at bombbomb.com or sign up for a demonstration and sell from the heart by being face-to-face -face with more people more often. Wow, check it out. Go test it out right now. Go to bombbomb.com slash heart. Try it for 14 days. And when you do, make sure to send a video message to me. I don't know. You might want to send one to Larry, but I definitely want one. Oh, come on. I, I want one before you, Daryl. So send one to me first. No. <laughs> it's fantastic. You want to give it a try. And so check that out. Bombbomb.com slash heart. Speaking of heart, oh, we've got a great conversation teed up today and a great topic. So Larry, why don't you introduce our guest and let's dive in. Oh, uh, well, before before I bring Fred Diamond on, it's it's interesting because you talk about hearts and diamonds and so forth. But nevertheless, I'm not a card player. But you, I always say it, it's amazing. I, 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 I've gone on to say this forever, Daryl, that there's golden nuggets. If you mine your networks, you never know who knows somebody. Now, layer on top of that playing on Fred's name is there's also a diamond in the rough that you will never know until you ask. And I've enjoyed building and getting to know Fred 
just a super great guy. We're going to talk about community without further ado. Fred Diamond, welcome to Selling from the Heart. Larry Darrell, it's uh, great to be here. Thank you so much. Well, Fred, this is going to be a great conversation today, but you know the question that every guest gets, and that question is simply this, Fred, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, by the way, I love the introduction and, and the word value came up. I forget it was who said it, but it's it's value. And I know we're going to be talking a lot about value today. And value is different now, I believe. I believe it's different than than where it was, you know, prior to, to March 15th when we all, you know, uh, quarantined, if you will. Sales has always been about value creation. It's been that way for 40, 40, 50 years, if you will. Value is so much more critical right now mainly because your customers need more from you. And I know we're going to get deep into that. Well, here, here's what's interesting about that. And, and I think the age old saying comes up right now is values in the eye of the beholder. And I'm a belief and I challenge salespeople all the time and sales leaders. If you really want to understand what value means, go back to your clients and ask them what value means. Help me understand what, you know, because we hear the word value all the time. But what is it? And when I when you hear it come from the mouth of babe, when you hear it come from your clients, it takes on a whole different meaning. You know, it's interesting. Um, I'm gonna, I agree with you, but I'm going to slightly differ on something that we believe sales professionals now need to be thinking about. Uh, uh, we talked before the show. I worked at Apple Computer for a long time in the beginning of my career. And I remember I sat in on a group with uh, the guy who was the CEO after John Scully. His name was Michael Spindler. And he made this statement to my team. He said, gentlemen, we need to know what our customers need before they know what they need. And that's been ringing true for me for the last eight, nine months, where I believe that sales professionals now, they need to know what they need to bring to their customers to bring them value before they even ask. Uh, you know, we had a... Uh, I had a guest on my uh, sales game changers webinar. His name is David Morelli. He's a, a mindset coach. And he said, everybody on the planet is dealing with three things right now. And this is still the case. They're dealing with getting past the COVID related issues related to COVID quarantining, uh, wearing masks, you know, all of those things. The second thing that everybody on the business planet is dealing with are the financial repercussions of COVID. You know, the businesses are going away. We all know what's happening to certain industries, if you will. And the third thing is whatever the third thing might be, whatever your company's dealing with or your industry or, or something like that. So we know that, right? For the first time ever, sales professionals know that our customers are dealing with number one and number two. So there's not that mystery of, gee, I have to find out where the company is going so I can provide value. You know, we know. You know, almost everybody on the planet is dealing with the same you know, the same two of the three things. So the great salespeople out there, the great ones are getting way ahead of the curve and understanding that and going to their customers with things that can help them solve the problems, which which they should know about. Yeah, I think that that is a really powerful perspective. And I've always believed that if you want to sell something, you better have your value proposition connected to one of the top three priorities in the company. And the reality is now, as you know, hopefully we're steering out into whatever the brave new world is and the new normal, old normal, whatever we are and wherever we end up in 2021, you're absolutely right. Everybody is struggling, you know, with those two issues plus whatever unique issue or issues uh, or goals or challenges they have in their organization. So it's incumbent upon us as sales professionals to come to the table with some ideas and then also, I think Bob Mesta was on the podcast a couple months back, and he said questions are questions open up the space in the mind in which solutions can be dropped. I thought that's so good. <laughs> uh, but these are good topic areas to uh, to to ask questions about right now. You know, it's interesting. I mean, we we've done uh, so many sessions. So I run a, an organization called the Institute for Excellence in Sales. I've been doing the Sales Game Changers podcast for a number of years, and we've had every possible uh, sales leader and talking about all these angles and active listening and great questioning skills. You know, one thing that we I know we want to talk about is, is community and how you can provide value to your customer as a community. I really believe that now's the time for sales professionals to distinguish themselves, 
to distinguish themselves by coming to their customer with solutions. Because once again, there's no mystery. You know, we all know what everybody is going through. For a sales professional to ask questions that aren't valid, questions like, well, what's keeping you up at night? I mean, come on. We know what's keeping you up at night. Every company <laughs> on the planet is dealing with those three things. So what we're finding is the best sales professionals, you know, are, are before they even engage with the customer. You know, they're coming in with not stupid solutions that just apply to what they offer, but specific solutions that they know their customers are challenged with. And it's not, hey, here's how my technology can make you more productive because you're probably challenged with that. It's things like, gee, I know that the healthcare industry is challenged with getting PPE or keeping your people safe or managing patients, whatever it might be, that are in the news all day long. Here are some ideas. Here's a partner that we brought in that we think might be able to, to help you right now. Um, that's where the sales professionals, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, when we were doing our, our daily webinars back in in uh, April, May, and June, there wasn't a whole lot of transactions happening, right? You know, people were trying to figure out what's going on, what do we do? And we realized, okay, if there's not a whole lot of transactions, but you're still a sales professional, right? What do you do to be a professional? You know, if there's no golf tournaments happening, the best golfers are on the greens, right? They're working on their putting. They're going to the driving range, even if there's no things. Same thing with sales professionals. If there's not a huge amount of transactions because of number one and number two that we just talked about, well, what do you do as a professional? Work on your presentation skills. Work on building networks. Work on working up creative ideas to bring more value to your customer. Finding new partnerships. And, and here's what I'd like to play on with with. You used a couple words that I th that are near and dear to me, and that's challenge and community and sales professionals. Uh -huh. And and here's I, I think this would be a. I was listening. There's so many nuggets that you just shared, Fred, but I think this is what sales professionals must do differently than they've ever done before: is create that sense of community with their clients. And you used the word network just a few minutes ago. What better way to do this than to create? I'll call it create a sense of community with your clients where let's just say it's in a virtual format because that might be the fastest way that you can bring some of your clients together and start introducing them to one another and get them start talking about and you facilitate, right? And get them openly talking about their issues, their challenges. And before you know it, you are bridging networks, you're building new relationships, you're strengthening new relationships. It's what you uncover that you can take out when you're prospecting for new business. You know, that's a great idea. And, you know, again, the word professional, I used to use the word sales professional all the time. We provide programs for sales professionals. And it really wasn't until the last couple of months <laughs> that we realized, okay, if you are truly a professional, what do professionals do? You know, you practice, you prepare, you work on your writing, you work on your communicating. You know, Larry, the point you just made is a brilliant one. You know, a lot of times we think that we know the value that we're bringing. We're bringing a solution that's going to help them communicate better with their prospects and manage their blah, 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 you know, whatever it might be. The real value might be at the end of the day is, is an introduction. You know, it might be an opportunity. I remember once when I was consulting, uh, I was pitching this guy on my services as an outsource chief marketing officer back in the early 2000s. And I showed marketing strategies and I showed all these things. The guy eventually became a customer for a year. I was his outsourced CMO. And he said to me at the end, he said, Fred, he goes, you know what the best thing you did for me was this last year? And I said, well, was it the McKinsey-like strategy <laughs> that I put in place? <laughs> was it? He said, no, that was good. He said, I said, well, well, was it the product launch process that you never had that now you have that has reduced your cost by 25%? He goes, no, that, that was pretty good too. He goes, you know, the best thing you did for me last year, you introduced me to Joe Smith. I've been trying to meet <laughs> Joe Smith for five years. And it was because I hired you that I finally got a meeting with, with Joe Smith. That's that's not the person's name, but I was like, huh, huh. I did all this MBA <laughs> stuff for you. I, I refined your, your company. And I said afterwards, I thought to myself, okay, that's great. You know, he wanted to meet Joe Smith. I know the other stuff I did was very valuable to him. And he thanked me and acknowledged me. But, you know, when I said to myself, okay, that was the real value. So I didn't know 
going into the gig. I didn't even know during the engagement that that was the most valuable thing, you know, because I know that I offer these three things. So, you know, in, in retrospect now, I started doing a lot more introductions, you know, and right now it's as a sales professional. I mean, that's the word we got to keep on hitting. You yeah. are a sales professional. What does a sales professional do? What is a football professional? What is a legal professional? What does a golf professional? What is a tennis professional? If there's no tournaments, tennis professionals out there serving 800 times. He's doing push-ups. You know, they're eating right. You as a sales professional, what might you need to be doing to wear that moniker professional? So you know, good, Daryl. So you know, good. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, this is this is a really powerful line of thinking here. And you know, what's what I noticed from last year in 2020 was once, you know, once we all got shuffled into our home offices and tried to figure out how to make that work, um, all of a sudden everybody was craving community. And uh, we were isolated. But one of the things I think that we learned from that was that sales professionals have the opportunity to be the organizers, the creators, the bringers together of community. And we've seen people inside this last year, inside the Selling from the Heart Insiders group. Um, and I'm thinking of several different people who have yeah. gone to their client base and said, you know what, I work with a bunch of IT directors or superintendents or whatever. Let's get these people together in the room. And they got a double whammy of benefit. First of all, they got to be friends with these people. Second of all, they got to listen to them talk to each other. So they knew, I mean, they got the specific nuanced words yep. for what they were really struggling with. And, and I think going into this new year now, there's an opportunity for sales professionals to, to literally become community organizers and bring together their prospects and clients in, in ways that we've maybe never even thought of doing before. You know, it goes back to, um, as a professional, pro, proactive, professional, mm -hmm. you know, proactive. you gotta be, yeah, you gotta be thinking like, how can I keep, you know, cause here's the thing, the customers are struggling with their own challenges. And we talked about it's number one, number two, or number three, right? Getting out of COVID, the finances and whatever the third thing might be. So, so we know what they're dealing with, you know, it is, so they don't necessarily need us, you know, I mean, unless we're providing essential services per se. So they're dealing with their own challenges. Um, so they're, they really only need to talk to us if we're going to be providing them with something of value. Um, one thing that one of my uh, uh, good friends who's a sales VP with a leading media company said, he said his big effort this year was to grow the friendships for with a lot of his customers. And I, I've never really paid a huge amount of credence to that. Um, I know the notion that you only buy from people you like. And, you know, those kinds of things and that relationship is, is important, et cetera. But the concept of friendship, which goes, I think, a little bit to selling with the heart. You know, I mean, are you I, I, I don't want to go down the whole path of empathy, but another big word that's come up a lot has been empathy, of course. And, you know, the ability to communicate and connect. You know, again, the other word with with community is communicate. You know, are you effectively communicating to your customer that you get there? You understand where they're coming from. You know, Larry, we talked about this before. One of the big notions that I tell people is if you're on a sales call and your customer or prospect is 95% of the talking, that's a great sales call, right? You know, it's like if your customer is doing yep. the customer, all the, all the speaking, maybe you didn't get all your messaging across. That was a great sales call, you know, because because you allowed them to verbalize, et cetera. You know, are you allowing your customer some space? I mean, uh, it's kind of interesting because most people, Right now, they're communicating if they're in sales with with three people, hopefully prospects and customers. But there's still a rigidity to the ability to have a conversation. They're communicating with the, the people in their house, right? Either their spouse or their children, uh, if they're in that situation. Unfortunately, some cases are by themselves, uh, or some cases are maybe with you know two roommates that they've been in the same small apartment with for the last nine months. And the third person they're communicating with is their team their managers or their leaders, if you will. In all of those conversations, there's really not a great opportunity. You mentioned authenticity. You know, it's it's kind of tough to sometimes be totally authentic with your customer. 
it's sometimes tough to be authentic with your your team. You know, everybody's vulnerable right now. Nobody's gone through a pandemic unless you were in sales in 1918, you know, and there aren't that many of those people left, right? So yeah, you're being vulnerable, but you're not being totally vulnerable, right? And with your family, you know, you want to maintain, if you're the, the parent, you want to maintain strength to keep your kids, you know, healthy and focused because they're missing all of their activities, sports and school and proms and all those types of things. So customers, I believe, are are desperate in some cases for a off the record type of an opportunity to have a conversation, you know, to talk about really how things are going. And we've seen some sales professionals, um, probably readers of, of the book and listeners to your podcast, who have taken that to heart and have found a way to allow the customer to be open with them in a place where they're really not being all that open. Mm. It, it, it's it's so true because I think that if we look back over the past year, this has been the perfect time to really learn something new about your clients, something that you didn't know before. Mm -hmm. and, and it goes back to some of my favorite sayings is the more that you know about your clients, the more you grow with your clients. And Daryl and I always talk about being relationship builders. And I think this has been the most opportune time is in as we look throughout the rest of 2021 is what can you do as a sales professional to be a relationship builder with your clients? What is it that you can get to know about your clients that you didn't know before? What's something new? Uncover something that you didn't know. Share something about you that they didn't know. These are all things that, you know, maybe a year or so ago, Daryl, we never even thought about. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I'm sorry, Darrell, go. No, go, please. Fred. I was going to say, and you know what, Larry, in those engagements, let them talk. Yeah, absolutely. You know, 100%. Yes. Let them, yeah. And I used, to, I used to always make a note when I had a meeting, LHT, let him talk, let her talk. <laughs> but right now it's like, hey, you know, hey, I, I want to I, I want to engage for a little bit. You got 15 minutes or 15 minutes for a quick Zoom. And if the person says yes, just let them talk. You know, let them say what's what's going on in their mind and they're going to think that you just had this great conversation, even though they did 90% of the talking. I love that rule, the 90-10 rule, whatever it might be. But if they're doing 95% of the talking, it's a great call. You know, if going back to uh, when you were that fractional CMO or virtual CMO and, and uh, the company owner said, wow, the best thing you did was connect me with so-and-so. <laughs> Um, I think there's a lot to really learn inside that. I mean, Larry, you've always said your network is your net worth. And if you think about the value you know, we, we want to be value added. We want to be, um, you know, we want to bring value to the table. One of the most overlooked areas of value we can bring as sales professionals is our network and not just our network of professionals. And we can certainly introduce people and refer. And by the way, if you want referrals, give referrals. I mean, that one's, that one's a no brainer, but, but it's, it's not just the references. I think it's also, um, being able to to facilitate conversation and like bring maybe don't just zoom one person and go hey I'm getting together some IT yeah. professionals this afternoon at three o'clock just to talk about what's going on in their world right now would you like to join me you know and and here's the link if you want to show up and see who shows up those relationships you're going to be able to add value you're going to be able to connect you're going to be able to learn. And those people are ultimately, I think, probably going to become your biggest fans and your biggest referrers. You kind of see, you know, kind of just serve it up and see who shows up. And I think it's a powerful sales strategy that we're just now beginning to uh, even think about as an area of possibility. You know, it's interesting, Darryl, you would say that. Uh, Larry, I want to make one good comment. I have a daughter who's a freshman at the University of Florida. She's, a, she's going to be in the B school. And uh, she told me about someone she met. And I texted her, I said, hey, looks like you're building a network. And she wrote back, dad, your network is your net worth. So <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that so good. But, but, here, but let's play on that because you never know who knows somebody. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, it's been amazing over the course of you know, our journey, the, the journey of selling from the heart. And Daryl, you and I have witnessed this firsthand is – it's amazing the guests. We get some of the coolest guests coming on the podcast. We enjoy conversations like the one we're having. But you'll be amazed 
at how many people know somebody or I find out something on a podcast and I immediately get off yeah. the podcast and I email somebody and said, Hey man, we just had this really cool guest, Fred Diamond, come on the podcast. You need to get to know this guy. Hey, Daryl, meet Fred, right? Fred, meet mm -hmm. Daryl. You know, I'll let you guys take it from here, but here's why I think you should connect. And I think this is what sales professionals need to do moving forward. Yeah. Is the more you can connect people together, it actually strengthens your position, and and they just you're just elevated that much higher in their status in their mind. You know the the other word, uh, you know, having doing doing daily webinars, you hear so much, you learn so much. We mentioned empathy. We I think we might have touched on preparation. We talked about professionalism. The other word that has come up all the time is service. And as you make sales professionals watching, as you make those introductions just make the introduction. You know, it may not pay off tomorrow in a purchase order or an RFP, but four years down the road, if you're a professional, right? Professional. Professionals aren't professionals for a quarter. Professionals are professionals for their entire career, which may be 20 years, right? You know, 20 years ago was 2000. You know, if someone reaches out to me uh, who I worked with at Apple because they see that I'm on the selling from the heart, you know, webinar uh, and podcast um, or podcast, I should say, and they happen to notice it on LinkedIn and they want to reconnect because they heard something that I said, because they read selling from the heart. That's 20 years ago. That relationship started. Right. Yeah. And I'm not sitting there wondering where is John Johnson, who I met in <laughs> 2000, like where's the purchase order, you know, as professionals, you know, it grows, you know, that introduction with no expectations. You know, the things that you could do, a note, uh, you know, I become uh, one of the people I've been spending a lot of time with is our good friend, Alice Hyman. And we've spent a bunch of times talking about gratitude and, and gifts. I've been making use of giftbasket.com and wine basket, another potential sponsor for you. By the way, I, I use bomb bomb. So good for you for getting them as a sponsor, but um, we, lo we, love, <laughs> we love the guys. Love bomb bomb. Yeah. It's, it's a great service. It's, it's, it's critical. We've been talking about that a lot as well. But, you know, just a little thing. That's what professionals do. Yeah. You know, they work on those little things. They show little mm -hmm. things. Making an introduction, it may not seem like a big deal, but, you know, it, for your customer, without even you knowing, I, I didn't know that that introduction to Joe Smith was such a big deal to my to my client in 2000. I really didn't. It was like, oh, okay. yeah, he went to meet Joe Smith. Joe, do you mind meeting my client, Mike? And they did. And I don't know what, what happened to it. Evidently, my client was thrilled. And, the, the client, he's still, he hasn't, we haven't done work together in 15 years, but you know, he's a first response. If I send him a note, you know, he'll respond back. If I don't text him too much, but if I were to email him, I know he'd respond back to me within 24 hours. So that's so what good. professionals do little things. So good. What hey, a Darryl, great conversation. Darryl, hey, Darryl, that's the, that's the thing that I take away from all of this. Yeah. Is, Salespeople out there and, and leaders, it's the little things. It's the yeah. small things. It's the things that we don't even think they'll remember. That's what they remember, right, Daryl? So true. Well, so true. Fred, thank you. I mean, what? thanks for investing in us today. This has been a fantastic idea-packed conversation. <laughs> and I just, on behalf of the whole Selling from the Heart community, just want to say a sincere thank you to you for investing in us today. Well, you know, just to wrap up here, you guys, you guys may not realize this, but with the Selling from the Heart uh, podcast and and the book and the communities that you built, you guys have touched so many sales lives. You guys have helped so many sales professionals get more value out of their career, which brings more value to their customer and to uh, and to their family. So mm -hmm. I want to applaud you both for the work that you guys oh, have done to just to have made the lives of thousands of professionals uh, better. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I well, need hey, Daryl, Daryl, I need a Kleenex. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, thank you so much. And uh, best wishes to you in this in this new year. You too. Namaste. All right. Thanks, Fred. Woo! Oh. I knew that wasn't gonna disappoint, but wow, holy smoke. I if you're listening in and you don't have a page full of notes, you need to hit rewind and write all the action items down because there there are a ton of nuggets inside this conversation today. Yeah, you know, Darren, what I really like, and, and you know, throughout the whole selling from the heart journey, we always talk about the difference between sales reps mm -hmm. and sales professionals. Yeah. 
And the professionals are going to rise to the occasion. They're going to double down on themselves and do the things they need to do Mm -hmm. to stand out. And what better way than to be community builders? You know what this reminds me of? Real quick. You know what this reminds me of is a conversation I had with a near and dear friend of ours. Oh, gosh, probably a year or so ago, Cody Bateman over at Send Out Mm -hmm. Cards. Mm -hmm. He said, Larry, he goes, I love what you are doing at Selling from the Heart, what you and Daryl are doing. He goes, if you can create a sense of community around it, watch what starts to happen because everything you put into it is icing on the cake, cherry on top. And I, I would urge salespeople out there, what are you doing to create that sense of community with your clients? Wow. So good. So good. What an amazing uh, time together today. And uh, just a huge thank you to everybody who's out there spreading the word about Selling from the Heart coming off the back of the 2021 Authentic Selling Challenge, which was incredible. And now looking forward to many of you also becoming a part of the uh, Authentic Sales um, uh, our authentic sales Success uh, Accelerator Program. I mean, it's going to be fantastic. I'm just so fired up about this year. A huge shout out again to our friends at BombBomb. Go to bombbomb.com slash heart. Test it out. Send me a video and send one to Larry as well. And uh, just, <laughs> hey, I like you, how you threw that in there, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you throw Larry a bone. Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be good. Thank you to everybody. And if you'd love to learn more about that um, or about the Authentic Sales Success Accelerator that's going to be starting soon, send us a message. Until ne- next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep adding real value build your community, and most of all, sell from the heart.